Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be showing you how you can set up your ability and your heads up display for your sword character. Because at the moment when I do go ahead and press play right now, you will see in just a second there is going to be no health working, no mana or anything like that and all of our ability cooldowns are just sort of broken, we don't have the right images and we also are unable to pick up these little health pickups that we've made. So we're going to be trying to fix all of this in today's video along with introducing an image for our attack ability that we've got here. So first things first, what I'm going to do then is start off with a heads up display. Now we copied the sword character from the magic character so this character will have all of the you know variables that it needs so ability cooldowns, health rate, mana rate and all that good stuff. So what I need to do is pretty much just change the HUD to cast to the sword character as opposed to the magic character that we've got. Now I don't want to do this in the same heads up display so it's going to break things a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have our RPG HUD for the magic character and then I'm going to duplicate this and then from here I'm going to call this melee HUD and that way in the side of this one, I can tell it to cast to the melee or the sword character rather than the magic character, so it gets all the right variables and all of that good stuff. So, starting off, inside of this new melee HUD, go to your graph, and then what you want to do is go to some of these functions. So you can see here we've got get health percentage, um, it says bad cast node here because we, you know, it's casting to the wrong thing. So what I'm going to do is drag out from this and then as this I'm going to cast to the sword character instead so cast to sword underscore character object wildcard goes into get player character and then as sword character get the health just like this and then just hook this up into the return rate and do that good stuff as well if you compile this that should get rid of any issues in this in this little blueprint of ours um, ignore that what have I done there <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I am terrible. Um, so what I'm going to do is just drop it in there and then we can move on to the next one. So we've done get health, let's go over to get mana, delete this, delete this, delete this, cast to sword underscore character, as the object wildcard once again get player character, and then finally simply get the mana and then hook this up just like that and that should get rid of any issues we've got in here. This is for the get mana percentage and then it's just going to be the same thing over here as well in a second. So what I'm going to do now is move to the third one over here, delete this bad cast node, delete this one and then once again cast to side, not side, <laughs> what am I talking about, cast to sword underscore character, get player character and then with this hook up your target over here and um, we'll delete that even so get ability one cooldown hook it up into this and into this and then if you want to go ahead and compile this you can see it's just getting rid of some of the errors and then we've got one more over here for the second ability delete this and then cast to sword underscore character and then just hook this up and basically what I'm doing here is essentially just getting rid of some of these bad references that no longer work because this heads up displays for a completely different character so get ability to cooldown hook it up just like that and hopefully this should be all of our errors removed from the heads up display so this should now get the health and the mana moving and it should also get the ability bars moving and the progress over here as well now one thing I do want to do is change these icons now the first icon I have actually created a new icon for the sword slash ability if you want to get that what you got to do is just head over to the latest version of the RPG project files once again the link is in the description and you can see I've got it here melee icon 1 fill and no fill just import those into the engine and you can start using them so open up your HUD assets folder click drag and drop that into your content browser and then with this blueprint widget open again, click this first ability for the fill image, set this to melee icon one fill in the fill section, and then for the background, set this to melee icon no fill. 
And now this, if we close this up and go through the percentage, you can see it's now for our sword ability as opposed to the other one. Now bear in mind we haven't actually set up the logic for the sword ability to have the cooldown yet. That's something that we're going to be doing in just a moment. So let's see if we can set that up. Also, what I want to do is tell it to open up this new heads up display as opposed to the other one. So open up your sword character. And then if we find our begin play where it's actually creating this widget over here for RPG HUD, find this and just change it to melee HUD instead. And then this should open up the right blueprint for you. So before I go into the cooldown stuff for the sword, open this up and you can see it's now moving. Our mana is regenerating and that's all good and we've also got the right ability on the left hand side there which is quite nice. Now we aren't triggering the cooldown for that at the moment so that's something that we need to take care of and it's really really simple to do. We're pretty much just copying the logic for the other abilities and the way that we did that if you remember is we are pretty much checking at the beginning here to see whether or not the player for the ability one cooldown is greater than one or greater than or equal to one. So what I'm going to do is do float and what I'm looking for is greater than or equal to one. And then the top value over here should be this. So what this is going to do now then is it's essentially only going to play this if the player has got enough cooldown. And then what we're going to do over here is after it's played the ability we're going to tell it to set ability one cooldown to zero so it's basically having to start again and then from here what it's going to do is run a branch check to see if that cooldown is less than one so ability whoops float less than and then over here so if we get ability one cooldown and then if we hook this up to one sorry other way around even so hook this one up to here control click to break this and hook this up to one if it's less than one, what we're going to tell it to do is essentially just set ability one cooldown to plus five. So adding a little bit to it each second, add a bit of a delay and then just loop it. So float plus float, get the original value over here. And then if we just hook this up to here, 0 0.05. And then after this, if we tell it to run a quick delay, just to get those little intervals, uh, not interval, intervals between each time it adds a bit of cooldown. Set this to 0 0.01. And then if we hook completed up to this branch, hit compile, and then hit play, you can see when I use the ability now, it's going to have that cooldown effect on it, which is quite nice. You guys can play around with the speed, it's entirely up to you, but I am pretty much happy with what we have got here. So just to confirm what we've just done here then, is we've pretty much after the ability has played, it's going to set the cooldown to zero. And then from there, it's gonna run a check, which is pretty much our way of telling whether or not it needs to add some cooldown to it. And it's also what's gonna stop it adding cooldown if it gets to 100%. So if it is less than one, it's going to add some cooldown onto it, run a delay and then just run a check. And it's gonna keep doing that until the ability cooldown is greater than or equal to one essentially. So the next thing that I wanted to do that isn't working with our melee character at the moment is our little health pickup that we've got over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly see if I can open this up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do inside of here then is because it's got the bad cast over here, it's not even gonna be casting to the magic character either. And the reason why it's not doing that is because we changed the name of that character earlier on, so this casting node is pretty much just broken itself. So what I'm gonna do is start by fixing this up for the magic character, and then after that, we are going to create another overlap event for the sword character, and we're just gonna attempt to change the health for the sword character rather than the magic one. It's really simple. So starting off, get this bad cast node, delete that, drag out and cast to magic underscore character. And then over here for this, hook it up to your branch just like that. As magic character, you wanna hook this up with your health over here. So delete this, get health, and then just hook it up just like that, just like it was before in the tutorials we made earlier on target for this is going to be this little cast here 
Now, for some reason, it's not letting me just hook this up, so what I'm going to do, do is simply delete this, set health, with the target of this, so set health, and then if we hook this up to true, and then actually just double check that, so was it hooked up to before? It was hooked up to false, so I'm going to do the same thing here, so set health, dragging out from here so we can use the reference, set health, hook it up to false, and then in and out should be hooked up to these, heading over to our branch, and then one last time we've got to do the same thing for this one over here as well, delete this, so this one over here is just setting health to 1, so let's just do that, so set health to 1 between the false and this just like this. So what it's doing is if the health has gone above 1 now it's just going to set it to 1 and that's all good and then if it's not it's just going to carry on just like that. So let me just double check that and make sure I did the same thing earlier on. So you can see here, even, sorry, it's a true and then false is going over to this. So just copy this. So just make sure you're doing the same thing. So set health, hook this up to the true. And then this goes over to here as well. And then set this to one. If we compile this, all of our errors are gone and that's all good and now what I essentially need to do is just grab our box reference so drag in box and then with this you've got all of these events over here we can use the one I'm after is begin overlap and then the other actor is simply going to be casting to the sword underscore character so basically this way by doing this we've now got two begin overlap events so this way we can make it work with both the magic character and we can also make it work with the sword character as well. And then what we're doing is essentially just copying this code over here. So what we're going to do, after we've cast to that character we're going to run a branch check and then over here we are going to get the health and then with this health we are going to feed this into a float greater than Thing over here, chuck this in, and then make sure this is going into the bottom one rather than the top one. Set that to zero. Now I'm trying to avoid, you know, just talking through all this code because we have done it already. Um, so if you do want to go through all this code and understand exactly what this means inside of the health pickup, just check out my health pickup video and you will find everything that you need over there. So with this, what I'm going to do now is set health once again so drag this out set health and put this into your false this into here and then over here we're going to drag the result out and we're going to do float greater than float condition is going to be a branch and then this is going to be one and then if we hook this up over here to our set node and then with this once again we are going to set the health set health and we are going to put this into the true and then from this we are going to spawn an emitter at the location now I'm just going to copy this last, last segment rather than recreating it all and then I'm just going to hook up false into here and then true just like this so it's one big loop don't worry about what all of this means because we've used all of this before however the important bit is if I compile this now press play and then run over these little pickups you're going to see it's going to collect it for our sword character and also what I'm going to do is go to my world settings real quick change this to the magic character and make sure it still also works for this character so I'm going to open that up and you can see it still picks it up and that's all good I am pretty much happy with that and I also want to make sure my heads up display is still working as well so I'm going to see if I can use one of my abilities and you can see my mana is not going down 
That is going to be because of our issue where you've got the bad casting nodes inside of here for the get percentage because we changed the character blueprint name. So what I'm going to do is pretty much just delete this once again just like we did at the start and we're going to cast to magic character and then as magic character get mana. Hook this up just like that and that will bring this one back to life. Compile this and that one's done. So that was get mana percentage, let's do get health percentage, delete this, cast to magic character, and then over here, get health, and then hook this up, and this up, and this up, and that's fine. Move over to your ability stuff, delete this, cast a magic character, object wildcard into here, Get ability, one cooldown, hook this up into here. Just replacing all of the stuff that we had before with the new working stuff. So cast to magic character, object wild card, and then get ability to cooldown. And then hopefully if we compile this now, there's no more errors press play, jump into the game, you can see everything's working again. So press 1, it's going to use the first ability, 2, it's going to use the second ability, our health and our mana is moving. If I go over to my sword character now, hit play, you can see use my first ability, it's going to use it, my health and my mana are moving. When we collect stuff, it collects it just in the way that it should do. But for now, that is pretty much everything that I wanted to cover in today's video. And that was just fixing up the heads up display and all the pickup items and everything related to these two characters. Because when you do start changing character blueprint names, things do get broken. Anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed the video and your game is running a lot smoother than it was in the last one. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this, then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.